The first speaker tonight is Kate Mason on item 2.5, uh, which is around the council decision on the administration of the 2024 ordinary election referendum on council. Yes. Kate, welcome. So in particular, um, thank you for the opportunity to address council, and in particular I'm going to speak to the constitutional referendum regarding the reduction of councillors from 15 to 9 that's being proposed at a cost of $230,371. Prior to the sacking of the Central Coast councillors in 2020, there were 15 councillors. The Central Coast councillor selection was divided evenly with three councillors representing each of the five wards. The plan to have a referendum to limit councillors to nine infers that wards will no longer be adhered to and the Central Coast, Central Coast community will be melded into one, in which case it will be another layer of amalgamation on top of an already fractured amalgamation process. The New South Wales Government Councillors Handbook states, councillors play a vital role in meeting the needs of local communities. They serve their communities by listening to people in the local area and then representing these views on council. The Central Coast was already at a disadvantage with the number of councillors prior to the dissolution in 2020. In 2017, in the Central Coast, one councillor represented close to 17,000 people, compared to Newcastle, where one councillor represented 9,000 people, and North Sydney, where one councillor represented 4,700 people. Add to this the massive influx of people forecast to live in the Central Coast. It's an odd move to hold a referendum to decrease further local government representation. Instead, it makes sense to increase the number of councillors. Central Coast community is already feeling the strain of government decisions being placed outside of their reach and understanding. In the Central Coast in 2022-23 alone, we have a newly formed unelected level of governance called the Greater Cities Commission rolling out plans under the title of Vision Shapers. The Central Coast Hunter has been declared a renewable energy zone. BlackRock was awarded the rights to build the Southern Hemisphere's largest battery in Lake Monmara, an incredibly powerful global company. The draft plan of management for Central Coast Council community land has serious implications for 400 sites. We have state government transport transformations as well. People are not being told the full picture regarding local, state, greater commissions and federal plans which are transforming the way we live, work and play, to use the fra phrasing in the plans. The plans endlessly speak of the importance of community having a say, yet often community members' submissions and questions are ignored. The Central Coast is at times called a global city and other times a smart city, yet this is not explained in a transparent manner to the public. All plans which we are seeing in the Central Coast are also being rolled out globally, so there is a larger agenda at play, and again, this is not made public. Whilst these transformative plans are unrolling, we have no one to represent our concerns. By the time the 2024 local council elections occur, these plans will be fully embedded, or whilst the council is under administration. And one could question if this is democratic. I'm saying no to any potential for less representation at local government for the 2024 elections and to over $200,000 being spent on a referendum process, which may potentially lead to the weakening of our community's ability to have access to the little potential representation we have left. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. 